series and it's basically it's a, a girl on the wild side basically and whenever she got in a fight she had a coin that she'd flip and throw at people <laughs> and, and uh, but she was there for the the, co the good cause basically so she even though she was on the wild side it was always for the cause of the good side she was on the uh, on the good side but that was uh, the TV program that she did was on yes mm -hmm. and how long was it between that television program and you being uh, hired for God's Love? So she was just on the TV program for a year, and one year later, they got to look game. Wow. How did you feel about getting asked to be part of the sort of resurgence of the Godzilla series? Um, of course, she didn't really understand Godzilla at the time, but the um, as it was a resurgence as well. Uh, one of the, the stars from the, the uh, first movie that she was in was also in the last Godzilla movie of the last series. And so when she heard that the, the superstar lady was in the movie before and that they were going to have a resurgence, she had, went to the, the, uh, the uh, video place, rented out the last one that there, she looked at it and said, oh wow, this is going to be something huge. <laughs> And because she was basically a new face for the gods of the series as well, she wanted to go say hello to everyone and give her greetings. And she was watching the special effects, and she could see Satsuma getting into the his outfit and in, he's got this aura around him as the Godzilla, the aura. And she wanted to go say hi to him, but she was kind of scared, so she kind of looked at him from way behind and said, mm, yeah, wow, this is really big, yeah. <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit about your experience working on that film. You were a brand new character, and I'm assuming at that time you did not know that your character was going to continue past that film. Means he was very surprised, but uh, as you're acting, you don't actually get to see Godzilla in front of you. And so when she was in the teleport, going up in the heli uh, uh, helicopter, going across the ocean, and she has to look out with her television, she says, Godzilla, this is Godzilla, Godzilla here, and everything else. And she'd done it many, many times for the scenes. And she finally, when she was at the, the previews, she finally got to see herself and see Godzilla actually coming up and said, He really is there! <laughs> Everybody around me says, you really got a good part in this movie! <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
んだけど、あのちょっと大人っぽくというか、だけど、メガゴジラってじゃない、トゥカラは今度、ゴジラとベビーとか、そっちを、えー、話し合う、はっきしないけど、自分の中、私のおなかの心臓が練習に当たっては、メガゴジラから、ゴジラに対する共存していく生物としての地球で成長,成長していくための生命体としてなんとかゴジラとこう一緒に生きていくことはできないのかゴジラを倒すことを考えないでベビーを守りながらベビーが出るとしたことによってそういうふうに。The uh, Bilandi was the first one, and then the one that we were in together, Godzilla vs. King Ghidra, at that time, she felt like she had to grow up a little more. She was trying to become more of an adult uh, in the movie that we were in together. But after that, when the baby Godzilla came out, and instead of trying to get, her, yeah, uh, instead of trying to get rid of Godzilla and the telepathy that she had, if there was any way that she could use her powers to help Uh, find a way that human, human beings and Godzilla could live together, especially to protect the baby. And uh, she thinks that that's probably one of the big、uh, main points in the movie, and probably one of the reasons why she was able to be in so many of them, because it's actually something that happens in life all the time trying to coexist with other people, other things. She gave her a hand for that. ベビーのおとり、おとりになってゴジラに入ってくるんですよ。ゴジラを養殖のためにあのベビーをおとりに使うのに、あの私がそれあと置いとけるかもしれないんですけど。Uh, she likes this scene, especially when they're asking the baby to come out, and she's actually following the baby and sees him heading towards. I think it's got.、The... There's a part when、uh, one of the other actresses has baby Godzilla, they get in something they're taking up, and she's following them, she's chasing after them.、Uh, that's one of her favorite scenes in all of the movies. Do you really like baby Godzilla? Still today? <laughs> After doing、uh, Bialani the first time, of course, you had, there's nothing in front of you, but after seeing that movie, she realized that she would have to imagine it even more.、Uh, the one thing that、uh, some of the other actresses and actors in the movie said when they were、uh, filming just the part for the actors without Godzilla is that、uh, you're, you're overacting, you're overacting, you're doing too much. And she would say,、uh, No, no, after you've been in a movie at least one, you'll realize this is just perfect. And so she and one other actor.、Uh, They acted about the same level, and, and the, other, the other actors considered them overacting. But when they actually saw the process, 
They think it's a And we didn't want to lose the Kawakita or to Godzilla. As actors, we wanted to be number one. <laughs> so out of the uh, Heisei era movies that you were in, by Alonso, Mirante, through Destroya, do you have a favorite of those performances? The the movie she likes the best, of course, is Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, the movie her the one she liked the best with her acting was actually the Destroyer. So yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Going out to eat together, stuff like that, and she said, "Oh, those are really cute earrings you have on those bridges." Oh, okay, I'll give them to you. Whoa, no! Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, sushi place and he took Megumi and Anna to that place and as the three of them were eating they took a big bite out of a, 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 a menu that is not on the menu they actually because he goes there a lot he's asked for certain things that are not on the menu and Megumi and Anna took a bite and they look at each other and they go wow they, just, they didn't have words it was so delicious and so they were they got to Kyoto uh, this was actually in Kyoto when they were filming for this and where the sushi bar was and after a few years, they went back, and they, Mr. Sasaki was in one of those Jidai Gekis, the samurai type of movies. And they both were there. He says, take us to the sushi place again. Okay. And they looked into it. There was no more sushi place. So they didn't do it again. He said, but she says, it's the best sushi I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit more about the, it, the it was a little fun. Just to, to add to that, we, uh, Mr. Sasaki, myself, Anna, and Megumi, the force, would always be sitting somewhere. Um, who's, who's the other guy in the movie's name? I can't get his name. The, uh, no, yeah, the actor, the, the, uh, the re reporter, the, the guy who wrote the book. He was also Mr. Baseball. Anyway, uh, that, that's how much I remember him. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Uh, he was there. He was actually new to the business as well, and uh, I was new to it, but I was just having a good time. But he was new to it. He wouldn't come over and talk to us. So it's always Mr. Sasaki, myself, 
and maybe we turn an that and the four of us would be talking about everything. I didn't ask for any pierced earrings, of course, but we, we were talking about all kinds of stuff, and it was just so much fun. And Omori, Mr. Omori is actually from Kyoto, uh, lives in the Kansai, Osaka, in the Kobe area, and so we got along really well, having been on the radio program together, and so we all really hit it off. And so even after the movies were over, we'd always connect to each other, and if they were, she was in a lot of plays, uh, Fiddler on the Roof, all kinds of things she did, so I go and see her plays, Otto's in plays as well, so we kept in touch a lot. So, yeah. Oh, she's got a picture of the two of us when I went to see her, see, that's how close we are, this is great! I, I felt bad for getting money for having so much fun, you know. No, I actually didn't feel bad about it, but, but it was a lot of fun. I remember people talking about having to wait so long, the actors, I think I think actors are overrated if they think it's hard to work in that sense. Uh, doing your, your, having to play a role is probably hard, but the waiting is really hard if you got good people around you. So we had a really good time. That's awesome. Uh, Anna has since gotten to heaven as well, uh, and other people, but if you look at the movie, especially Godzilla for this King Gidra. Um, she's kind of getting choked up here, and she's going to make me choke up too. But um, Anna has since gotten to heaven, but if you look at the movie again, you see her and her happy face and uh, hanging in there as her role. Remember her, and even when I pass on the next generation of Godzilla fans, they see our movies, if they even remember for a little bit of what we've tried to do to help uh, make Godzilla what it is, we're forever thankful. So thank you for that. Thank you. 
Uh, uh, her husband is also here as well, but her father-in-law, she went to see the 2014 American Godzilla uh, together with her husband and father-in-law. And when I went there, Watanabe Ken was in it as well. And when uh, He's almost 90 years old now, the father-in-law. Uh, when he opened the pamphlet and looked at Watanabe Ken and all the names and now it's in Hollywood and this and that, he looked over at me and he says, you know, you're really something after all. <laughs> Um, my father-in-law really didn't know me up to this point. <laughs> yeah, let's go back and talk a little bit more about the Heisei era. Uh, obviously, you were in all of those movies after uh, after the first 1984 film. So, from Biorante to Destroya, did you have any stories that you'd like to tell us about? working with specific actors, maybe some of the Showa era actors. Uh, you were in with Yoshio Tsuchiya. She has a lot more uh, experience and, and memories with Kawakita. Is it, is it okay if she talks about him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 